Today's journey begins from my home in Bali. Because it was the day before the G20 summit with world leaders descending on the island, I was afraid that the road to the airport might be paralyzed with traffic and security, so I uncharacteristically left four hours before my scheduled flight time. Unbelievably, there was no traffic at all and we arrived within 30 minutes to the airport. Today I was flying Turkish Airlines in business class to Lisbon with a layover in Istanbul. There were a few people ahead of me at the check-in and I waited about five minutes before I had my boarding pass in hand. I breezed through security and immigration and within about 10 minutes, I was in the premium lounge. It was nice to see that the lounge had returned to full service as my last two visits there shortly post-pandemic revealed an anemic offering, to say the least. Today there was an open bar with a couple drink selections along with a hot buffet. However, the lounge was absolutely packed. This premium lounge serves all the major airlines and seating was quite limited during my afternoon visit. A few hours later, it was time to finally head to the boarding gate. My flight was departing at 9 p.m., which was actually the very first time I'd ever left Bali on a flight in the evening. Of course, I was excited to be flying in business class and had never flown Turkey 787 before. I had selected seat 7A for the 12-hour flight from Bali to Istanbul, which, when I arrived at my seat, I discovered to be somewhat of a mistake as the seat was aisle adjacent instead of being tucked towards the window like the even-numbered seats. Somewhat surprisingly, the business class cabin was completely full. So I've been in my seat now for probably about 10-15 minutes and I had a really nice glass of lemonade and we're probably just finishing up the boarding process. I still see a couple people on the gate. Now, this is my first time flying Turkish Airlines in this plane, which is a 787. I've flown before in business class um, on a regional plane from Istanbul to Madrid. So today my flight, as I've said, is from Denpasar to Istanbul, and then I will have another flight from Istanbul to Lisbon, which is my final destination today. So my first impressions thus far um, are that I chose kind of the wrong seat. Uh, I should have chosen an even numbered seat so that I would have had, you know, more like kind of buffer from the aisle, but instead my seat is next to the aisle and then I have here with this window, the console. And uh, what else to say? So far I'm a little bit perplexed that there's no amenity kit. Like even on short flights, I feel like an amenity kit is pretty much de rigueur. So they do have some slippers and like a little blanket, but um, I'm hoping that maybe after takeoff they'll come around and pass out an amenity kit and some other accoutrement, like a proper pillow and things to make the bed because this is a nighttime flight. Our departure time is 9 p.m. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting a decent amount of sleep, which will be after the dinner service. I did have a little bit to eat in the lounge. I was happy to see that in the lounge now in Bali, since the last time I was there, which was about five months ago, they have completely resumed hot food service and they have an open bar. I mean very small selection but again this is Bali this is not you know Singapore or Bangkok so you kind of always have to temper your expectations but things are much better um, other thoughts thus far are that uh, this business class flight is or rather this business class cabin is completely full there's not one seat open so it's just like it kind of travel has really really obviously come back by now so let me tell you a little bit about this seat. To be honest, it felt a bit cramped for such a long haul flight. While there was space to put my backpack to the right of my seat and my camera bag underneath the footwell, it felt like the foot space itself was really cramped. It took me a while also to figure out that the seat controls were hidden in a touch screen that was blank until it was tapped. Also, the remote was really useful because even though the TV was also touchscreen, it was too far away to comfortably navigate. The cabin was kept extremely warm, but I discovered that the air vents above opened and provided a blast of cold air. Menus were passed out while we were still on the ground, and I had my heart set on the tortellini. 
The alcohol menu contained local wines from Turkey as well as a French Chablis and Cabernet Sauvignon as well as Tattinger Champagne. There was an actual chef, or at least a woman dressed in a chef's uniform, who came around the cabin taking individual orders, which is something I had never experienced before. Unfortunately, she didn't get to me before takeoff, and I had to wait until we were in the air for her to come back and take my order. Once we were airborne, the elusive amenity kit finally made its appearance, inside containing fuzzy non-slip socks, which were nice, but certainly not Tibetan socks, as well as the standard toothbrush, lip balm, face mist, and hand cream. Sadly for me, by the time the chef finally came around to take my order, the tortellini was all gone. It was a bit annoying because I had been unable to book my meal pre-flight, and I felt like because I was in the second to last row, I generally had worse service the entire flight. When I returned from the bathroom, a hot towel was waiting at the seat for me. Am I the only person who likes to steam their face with these? Anyway, I found it rather strange that the turndown service occurred before the meal, with the stewardess placing a quilted cover on the seat. This provided a minimum amount of padding, but it was still better than nothing as I had experienced on Fin Air in business class. Shortly thereafter, a bowl of warm nuts arrived and my very belated order of tea, which had originally been forgotten. A bit later, the first course arrived, and if you're familiar with Turkish Airlines, you'll notice something is conspicuously missing, the little candle which typically adorns the meal tray. Apparently, like my order of hot tea before, it had been forgotten. I found the food and the meal service to be adequate without being superlative. The appetizer of turkey breast and scallops was acceptable but lacked flavor, and the main course of fish I had been stuck with was dry and uninspired. I hate to complain about things like this, but on an airline that prides itself for its dining experience and a country that overall has an exceptional cuisine, it was disappointing. At least the array of Turkish desserts were tasty, and when the chef came over to ask how everything was, and I pointed out that I never got my little candle, she was extremely apologetic and ran to bring one to my seat. With that, my clonopin kicked in, and I passed out. All I can say is thank God for clonopin because this bed was quite possibly the most uncomfortable business class bed that I recall sleeping on. Like the footwell is so narrow, so it's impossible to sleep really on your side, which is how I typically sleep. And I just felt like I was tossing and turning and really uncomfortable, but I was shocked because I opened my eyes and I see the stewardess right in front of me and I ask her, what time is it? And she said, we have only one hour to landing and it's the breakfast service now. So, oh my God, I can't believe it, but I actually slept more or less for about eight hours. Really, really surprised. My mouth is extremely dry, but again, I'm just happy to have slept through this because it was not the most comfortable business class seat. And I'll have more to share as I start to kind of wake up, I just ordered a Turkish coffee, which I'm really excited to have. Turkish coffee is so tasty. And then the breakfast service, and without really much more time, we'll soon be awake. We'll soon be landing. Turkish coffee time? Yes. Yes, please. So excited. Turkish coffee really is the best. Oh, with a little Turkish delight. Enjoy, sir. Thank I you. hope you are not disappointed now. <laughs> we'll see after breakfast. <laughs> okay. You guys, I'm trying the Turkish coffee and I'm really wondering, can somebody tell me, is it supposed to taste so sandy, like that you taste all of the coffee grinds on the top? I've had Turkish coffee before and in my recollection, it wasn't like that. It was smooth because they strain out all of those coffee grains. So this one kind of, it tastes like I'm being poisoned, if I'm being completely honest. I'm happy to have my proper American coffee. Uh, nice and smooth without feeling coffee grounds in your mouth. I try, I change it. Are you going to tell my future? <laughs> she's telling me, no, she's telling me maybe, that you can tell the future. The girls, I'm not like standard girls. <laughs> I'm a scientist, some, some kind of, I mean, 
Wait, so this one you has... Would you like to try this also? I would, yeah, yeah, please. Uh, I did my best. I because changed something, but uh, it is not possible to make it the same like in the on the ground. Like smooth, yeah? Yeah, I'm just... Uh, normally, we are uh, boiling it yeah. uh, in the uh, pot. Yeah. I don't have... Uh, you don't have a oven. strainer? I don't have oven. Yeah. I put the grater. Put the whole hot water and just and just mix it. Yeah. Sorry Do you like it? Do you I drink it? Like, Do you drink it like that? Sometimes. What do you usually drink? Turkish coffee or regular coffee? Americano. <laughs> What's that? Americano. Oh, Americano. Yeah, me I too. So the captain just announced that in 10 minutes we're beginning our descent into Istanbul, and when we will arrive, it'll be quarter to five a.m. So I'm a little bit perplexed again by this breakfast spread. I was promised some scrambled eggs, but I don't know if it's because I woke up so late, so I just got like the last of the pickings, but I had the same sort of appetizer as was served for the dinner, which was the turkey and um, something else. It was, again, kind of dry, croissant, not as good as on Qatar Airways, where it was like flaky and heavenly and something you would get from a Parisian boulangerie. Turkish coffee in the air, not very good, just full of coffee grains, but happy for the Americano. And I'm sure that by the time I get to the Istanbul Lounge, I mean, hopefully that it's not so, so early, but they should have some kinds of breakfast foods there. Turkish Airlines lounges in the Istanbul airport are gigantic, and there's one in every gate. After 12 hours in the air, I couldn't wait to have a shower. I just don't think that there's any better feeling in the world that when you get off a 12 hour flight to be in the airport lounge and they have a shower that is as fabulous and luxurious as this. Now, Turkish Airlines has really kitted out the amenities. They have the bathrobe, they have the slippers, of course they have the little vanity kit. And on the other hand though, I always come prepared with my own vanity kit. So I, uh, I just washed my body and now I need to go through my whole morning routine of moisturizing and cleansing and all of that stuff just to kind of make me feel like a human again because it's actually 6 a.m. right now local time here in Istanbul which is about nearly 10 a.m. I believe in Bali so this is typically the time that I would be awake and it does seem like I got a decent amount of sleep on that flight I have a lot of time before my connecting flight to Lisbon I think somewhere around maybe five or six hours actually and it was sort of amusing though a little bit I mean I knew it was gonna be okay but I got into this lounge and then when I went to ask about the showers to the concierge, she asked me for my boarding pass and I looked through and I'm like, oh my God, where's my boarding pass? So at some point, somehow I had lost it, but not a big deal. I went into the uh, lounge check-in counter and they were able to issue me, issue me a new boarding pass. But then when I went back to the concierge, she asked my name and she had my boarding pass because apparently I had left it in the bathroom. Now I am not typically, that absent-minded, but today, you know, after getting off a plane for 12 hours and still probably being under the effects of a sedative, I'm not 100% myself. So once I get cleaned up, I wanna hit that breakfast bar, have some more coffee, settle down, maybe even do some shopping here in the Istanbul airport and just try to enjoy life a bit, right? You guys, I have just discovered something so incredibly cool. As I was coming out of the shower, I looked to my left and there was a door open and I saw there's like a little teeny hotel room. So when I go back out to the concierge, I ask what's with the private rooms? And she said they are available to certain passengers. And then she checked my boarding pass. And because I'm on a flight that was longer than nine hours coming from Bali to here, which is actually 12 hours, and what were the other requirements? Because I have a layover that's between four 
and nine hours, my layover being like literally eight hours and 59 minutes, um, I qualify for this free room here in the Istanbul private lounge. So in this room, there's a TV, there's a bed, and most importantly, it's just like a nice private space. Oh my God, that is, I feel like the height of luxury to in an airport have a space that is all your own that you can literally lie down and then it's quiet and I can do work here or I can just relax or I can take a nap or whatever the case is and they give you a key card so that you can come and go as you please meaning that you can just go back into the lounge drink eat whatever she also said that you can even bring food in here so I am just totally blown away I had no idea that this existed and had I not just walked by one of these suites where the door was open. I would have had no idea that this is something that's even offered to people. And just my luck, again, that I fit literally all the requirements of being able to access this lounge. Again, coming from a long flight, having a long layover. So Turkish Airlines, in my opinion, just totally like raised um, in my estimations, even though, again, I guess it now is a good time to just talk about my flight here in general. Like it certainly wasn't bad, but it did not in any way blow my mind. I just felt like the service itself was a bit haphazard. Um, they had run out of the dish that I had really wanted. And then the fish that was proposed to me by the chef who was super nice and super apologetic that they didn't have it. Um, it just wasn't that great. I mean, again, I'm comparing now to experiences that I've had on other you know, gorgeous airlines flying international business class. And so it just was a bit lackluster in that sense. And then I just kind of felt like at times the service was a little bit weird, like just not on their game. They never gave me the little uh, lamp that they gave other people. And then when I talked to the chef, because she had come over to me and asked, how was everything? Um, I said, uh, you know, I'm just curious, how come they didn't give the lamp? Like, this is actually something that Turkish Airlines promotes as part of their service. And she said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, we just have such a full flight, but let me go bring you one right away. So in that sense, you know, they were really responsive and apologetic. But again, I just felt like there were some like service issues that was not as attentive as I have come to expect on other airlines. But Long story short, for a 12 hour flight, the fact that I did get to sleep for eight hours, that's more thanks to Klonopin than anything. Um, you know, and food was okay. I missed most of the breakfast service because I woke up so late. So I only kind of had the like breakfast appetizer and missed out on what would have been either scrambled eggs or pancakes, but that's fine by me because here I am in the lounge and there's tons of food here anyway. So my plan now is that since I'm washed up, I want to go back and get some food, get some coffee, bring it back into my own little private oasis here and just, I mean, just chill out. Like I could not be more excited and on cloud nine. Like I have never experienced anything, literally anything like this before where I have my own private suite in an airport lounge. I mean, I've never flown like first class, I mean like the step above business class or suites or anything like that. So I don't know what that level of treatment is, but already for me, my mouth is just like, ah, uh, how amazing and how cool is this? So I just went back out to the lounge to get myself some breakfast of various scrambled eggs and an orange juice with which I can take all of my daily vitamins and supplements. And look at this. I just cannot believe that I get to relax and lay down on a bed for several hours until I feel like getting up and maybe exploring a little bit more of the Istanbul airport. I've had the most delightful nap for the last hour. I'm actually so surprised at how comfortable this bed is it's almost as comfortable as my bed at home with its two feather topper mattresses. So now feeling like pretty revived, I've decided to go back and get a little bit more food this time, getting another cup of coffee. First, I tried the Turkish coffee again, just to compare the difference between how it is 
on the ground versus how it was in the air. On the ground, it was definitely a bit better. It's similar to espresso. It's just that it has so much like grounds in it by the time you reach the bottom. So I'm happy back to my Americana, which I can mix with my collagen powder. That's something that I do literally every single day. And I still had some of these packets left over from Thailand. So I also got, which I'm excited to try, is this traditional Turkish dish. I already forgot the name in Turkish. When I looked at it, I said to myself, okay, remember that name, remember that name so you can say it on the video. And then literally a second later, it was out of my head. But it is rolled and has some cheese and looks like some spinach or something in it. Anyway, my experience with food in Turkey is that anything that combines carbs and cheese in this country is just absolutely delicious. So now it is 9.23 a.m. local time and my boarding time is 12.50. So I still have a good three something hours. I think that I'm gonna continue to relax a little bit and then I may venture out downstairs to just kind of window shop because at this point in my life, I really don't need stuff that you buy in airports and you know, but it could be fun. After a delightful several hours in my private suite, it was time to head to the gate for my flight to Lisbon. Once I arrived, I found out that boarding was delayed and waited around 20 minutes until it began. The flight to Lisbon was just under five hours and was on an Airbus A320 with 10 seats in business class. This time the cabin was only half full. I found it strange though that Turkish used this particular plane on this route versus their lie flat configuration that I had previously flown to Madrid. The seat felt like a US domestic first class seat. It had a nice amount of recline and the leg rest came out with a separate foot rest but lay flat, it was not. In the middle console were the seat control buttons, a power outlet, and the remote, which was hidden away under the armrest. The remote had a touch screen, which was better for controlling the TV, also touch screen that had a little bit of tilt. We were a bit delayed for takeoff, but eventually I was offered a welcome drink and soon boarding was complete with no one next to me, meaning my Cordoba hat had its own seat for the flight. As this was an afternoon flight, a lunch service was offered and this time I actually wanted the fish, but got into a drama when I was told that there was no fish left. This time though, I really let the stewardess have it because I was still annoyed that they didn't have the meal that I had wanted on my previous flight. She asked if I wanted an economy meal instead, which obviously I didn't. She went back to the galley and discovered somehow that there was one sea bass left and offered it to me. Unfortunately, that didn't really solve all the problems. As I mentioned on the previous flight, my impression was that Turkish's service was haphazard overall. You can see in the presentation of the lunch tray, the little salt and pepper shakers were knocked over, food was falling off the plate, and overall it was served without pride or attention. The sea bass itself was, again, okay, but nothing special or delightful. I just feel that for a flight as expensive as this, when other airlines are really offering something that is more like an experience than just a mode of transportation, Turkish could be doing a lot better. Certain small issues like consistently forgetting to bring things or waiting 5 to even 10 minutes after the call button was pressed seem like aberrations after my experiences in other premium cabins. Overall, it was a mixed bag with the absolute highlight being the private suite on the ground in Istanbul and the low being the service on the flight to Lisbon. I hope you enjoyed traveling with me and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to follow along on my journey in life and in Lisbon. Until the next time, take care and I'll see you later.